Okay, so let's take a look at running through this exercise to create a program which outputs the times tables or multiplication tables. In Visual Studio I'm just going to do a new project. If we look at this as a console application to start with, so I go times tables, I'll leave the solution name the same for now, I click OK. That will create an empty project for me. It's my properties, uh, references, which we'll come back to, configuration file, and the main program itself, which is here. I'm just going to paste into a multi-line comment the brief for the exercise. There we go. So first of all, let's split these up into some steps. One, two, three four and five okay there we go so let's have a look first at number one create a program which outputs the two times table one by two is two and so on the, the, the first thing to remember is that when we run a console application in the debugger if I just run this now it'll run straight through an exit so I'm just gonna put a console read key which reads one key press from the console I had a comment above that, just so that the behavior, if we compile and then debug, the behavior will be to wait at the end of the program for us to press a key so we can see the output. Okay, so the simplest way to output the two times table would be um, just to write out the, um, the whole thing like this. So let's start from the simplest possible solution. Let's go up to 10. Okay, there you go. Um, apart from the fact that I need to obviously just change these as well. CX8, you get the picture 10, 12, 14, 16. 18 and 20 okay there we go so there is our it's pretty small but there's our two times table here that's obviously not a great solution to even this first point it's quite a lot of code for printing out some text um, so what might be apparent is that we could use a for loop so if we said for int i is equal to 1 because we want to start at 1 i is less than 11 because we want to stop at 10 so less than 11 we could also say less than or equal to 10 if you find that clearer and i plus plus because we want to add 1 to i each time we go around the loop so we can get rid of all of this because we're going to do it dynamically we can put that into there so what we can do now um, is we can mark up using these replacement tokens, naught being the first one, so we'll put i in, the first position corresponding to naught, first argument. 2 is 2, because we know that's the, the table, and if we do a number 1 there for the next argument, that's going to be i times 2. 1, 2, 2, twos, 3, twos. Let's just demonstrate that in action. There you are. You can see we've got the same table printed out. And if you wanted to inspect this, you could click over in this grey section here, set a breakpoint then click start on your debugger again from the toolbar and you'll see the program stops here I can hover over I, I is 1 I could also select this right click I could add watch which will add it down here I could also quick watch which will pop it up here and I can inspect the value if I click continue it will go around to the next iteration of the loop and so on. I'm just going to take that breakpoint off by clicking again. Continue to the end of the program. There we go. There's our table. OK. So that, I would say, is the two times table, and that's pretty much done. One thing to bear in mind is that that value 2 is fixed in here. So what if we just move it out of our loop? Let's adjust that to be 1 and that to be two let's put our table in there change two to be table and we should see that we get exactly the same uh, result there's actually oh, an error what's happened there 
so you can see we had a build error let's close that if we go to error list we can double click on this it will jump us to more or less where it happened argument missing so I've got an extra comma there which I'll take out I'll then click start again and there's our two times table but that now means if we wanted the four times table we just change that variable and there you go the four times table so let's set that back to two okay so now let's move on to the next step amend the program so it asks for a number and output to that table so where we're already setting the table in this variable we want to do console dot read line because that will read in a whole line that will return us a, a string string input let's call it input for now now we need to turn that into a number to feed it into this table variable here um, so let's there are, there are kind of several ways we could do that we could do we could use the convert object which is fine um, but could throw an error if for example the value is invalid let's demonstrate this working and demonstrate the problem with it so if we run it it's going to wait for a value here well that's not great because we don't really know what's going on so before we do it let's do console.write which table okay let's do that double quotes for a string I've deliberately left a space on the end there and single quotes for just one character if you need to mark out so which table let's have the three times table and hit enter as our table works perfectly great let's run it again which table Fred and you'll see that we get a format exception because Fred cannot be converted to an integer if we go debug stop debugging so a better way to tackle this on the int object there is a method called try pass and you see that the first argument is a string so that'd be our input and it outputs an int result so we can do out which is a, a keyword saying we want to set the value of this second argument and we'll say table so if here we do int table equals naught at the top so it's initialized there we go Int try pass there we are out table so that will try and pass our input into a variable so if we now run this and we type in two we get our two times table if we run it again and we type in Fred we get the naught times table because it hasn't been able to process the value in here and it's left us with our default value of naught so maybe a better way of doing that would be to put uh, cause if we just hover on this you'll see it returns a bool so if we said if not in try pass console dot right line please enter a valid number else let's put that down there so it's nice and tidy otherwise do that so let's run that and again if we go Fred it'll say please enter a valid number and it'll exit we haven't put any code in to kind of loop back to the beginning but we could easily do that and I think that that's probably a, a little extension you could you could make later on so we've done this second one and now we're going to look at um, the third step which is to amend your program so that if you put in a minus one it will give you all of the tables from 1 to 12 if you bear with me for just a minute okay so a small child stealing the remote control in the middle okay right um, if I put this on YouTube I'll edit this bit out where I run away to sort Eric out do you want to take that? okay <laughs> right put the telly back on for Eric okay so let's amend the program so that if minus one is put in as the table number it will output them all so at the moment we're outputting one table that's where we get our input this is where we try and pass it so here we're gonna say if table is equal to minus one And what do we do then? Because this is this loop will only output a single table. So 
first of all, let's preserve our existing behavior by using an else. If it's not minus one, let's do what we've been doing before. If it is minus one, let's copy that up. So we need to run this section many times. So let's go for int uh, tables equals one because well let's say two because we're going to start with the two times table okay so let's let's make it easy for ourselves tables is less than or equal to 13 well, we're going to go 1 to 12 don't we so let's do 1 and 12 like that tables plus plus so we're comfortable with that increments the value of tables and it moves us forwards so now if we say here the first table we want is number one just so that we know that the default value is sensible. Table equals tables, do we need to even do that? Not really, because we can just do this. We can use tables directly in there. We don't need that, and we don't even need that. Table stays as minus one. Okay, so you can see for one to 12, and within that, for one to 10, output our same string. So if we run this, let's prove our existing behavior. Yep, there's a two times table, great. Let's run it again and let's put in a minus one and there you can see if I just scroll up a little bit that we've got our two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve times tables lovely so what we now get into is that this works quite well it's still a fairly short program but we've obviously repeated this section and that's not really good so let's look at what we could do to avoid repeating that the obvious way immediately without complicating it would be to have a function that does that second loop so let's do public void output table in table okay so public void it's public anything can run it we could make it private um, and we can talk about what public private and the other modifier protected me later on void means that it doesn't return a value that could be string or in or a class um, various other options as well so let's grab our loop and put it in here so we're pretty comfortable now with what this loop does and we put it into there we can just take it out of here and we can say output table tables goes into there we can copy that we can paste it in here and this time it's table because it's not minus one let's just build that oh doesn't compile an object reference is required for the non static food or messy times tables program output table so the reason I get that error is because I haven't actually got an instance here I'm in a static method because we're a console application and this is not static so you need an instance of a class so that's an object created from a class to run it uh, in this case the easiest fix is to add the static modifier here so that this is now static this now belongs to the class itself we can now run this we do our two times table that works as before and we can also do our minus one there's our 12 tables in a row great so now we've got a function we've eliminated that duplication that's not really always the best practice because we may also want to use that code from somewhere else so what we're going to do is add a class that handles that part uh, so we're going to right click on times tables here we're going to do add and you could go into new item but for classes you can also click class here and it will jump you into the add item wizard visual c items and it will jump you straight to class here we're going to call our class multiplication table you don't even need to put the dot cs on the end it'll add it for you okay so you can see it creates a blank file namespace times tables if we flick back here namespace times tables happens to be our solution and project name we'll cover namespaces again later but essentially they're used to group a set of classes and objects together um, you can't refer to something that you haven't included the namespace for so whether you see these using these are including referenced namespaces like the system namespace and so on okay so let's grab our output table function which we know works and let's pull him out of here tidy that up and save and let's pop him into here so the first thing we need to add to our class let's make our class public so anyone who included our program could use it if they wanted to we could leave it private so that it's internal to our program as well but this might form part of a library later on which would be kind of the next step so we need a constructor and this is a method that's called when the object is instantiated 
so when you create an object from the template represented by a class this method will run and it must have the same name you can see autocomplete helping us here it has the same name as the class and it doesn't have a return type there's no void there's no string nothing um, so there we go we can take arguments or not as we choose I'm going to choose to have an argument of table and then I'm going to add a property public int table I'm going to say that this can be get or set the sort of inline syntax I've used at the top here is the simplest way to add a property that just stores a value so it's a value in a class that can be accessed from outside and I'm just going to set that to the variable in the constructor and then this static method will work almost exactly as it is but we're going to take away the static and we're going to take away the argument and where we've got table we're going to say this dot table so that this keyword in a class refers to the current instance an instance is an object that's created from a class so if we go back to our program output table is now not defined it won't work so once we know we're going to output the times table let's go in here and say multiplication table and I actually would kind of like to call that table mm. um, I'm going to call it multiplication table equals new multiplication table let's pass our table parameter in and let's put in console.out.write line uh, outputting the times table and just to show you how the property works this is really we'll get it from the object now so that we don't break our all tables functionality that goes in here and then here we do our multiplication table output table so I think that's fairly straightforward we can run that I haven't changed that yet so I get a build error now I don't want to run output table doesn't exist right okay so I'm gonna have to do the same kind of thing that I'm doing here hmm tables and that's it and that works great now it compiles I can run it here's our two times table with a little bit of text at the top and here is our set of all of the tables with a little bit of text at the top it's still kind of duplicating a bit of code here so even though we've met the brief it's still not great and maybe we could say well get a little bit bit clever and kind of have our um, int tables is equal to Hmm, not if table is equal to minus one so let's have a start table and an end table if table is equal to minus one start table equals one end table equals 12 else start table equals table end table equals table so we're setting a range in these two variables and we can now get rid of our if and else like that and we can say for tables equals start table tables is less than or equal to end table and there if we build that let's see if that now gives us exactly the behavior that we want let's do the two times table there we are and let's do our minus one and there we are um, we could maybe tidy this up or shorten it an option would be uh, instead of this section a different way of doing this this isn't really a case of right or wrong it's just another option we could say int start table equals and we could use a conditional expression start table is equal to table is equal to minus one if it's equal to minus one then one otherwise table and in end table equals table is equal to minus one 12 otherwise table we can then take all of this out and you can see that they're kind of like an if else statement in one line that evaluate to a variable and that just helps us to shorten our code a little bit and there you have a really really fast sort of run through of these five points of the times table exercise